In the wake of the financial crisis, the collapse of several major European banks raised a number of key questions. Was it, for instance, right for the European Union to provide huge bailouts worth trillions of euros to the European banking sector? Had the collapse been caused by too little regulation of the financial sector, or perhaps too much? For many, the central question, how can we avoid this in the future, had only one answer, the creation of the European Banking Union. What then would the European Banking Union look like? In the Commission's proposal, two clear patterns have emerged. Firstly, that the European Central Bank, the ECB's, control over the European economy is notably increased. The idea that a central supervisory mechanism would allow the ECB to prevent future crises, however, is often met by concerns that supervision from Frankfurt would lack both transparency and accountability. This begs the question whether supervision, therefore, is best left at the level of national banks. The second pattern is that banks, through the so-called single resolution mechanism, to a much wider extent, will be left to their own devices in the event of a bailout. While the idea that the banking sector, rather than the taxpayers, should pay for the bailout has received popular support, many bankers and economists are worried that Europeans will struggle with high interest and rigid banking structures. In creating a European banking union, other questions would also need to be answered. For example, should there be a common list of minimum requirements that all European banks must abide by? Should banks outside the Eurozone be obliged to bail out their Eurozone partners? Is there a problem for democracy that national and central banks lose oversight of their economies, as suggested by the Commission? What's your answer to these questions? We look forward to seeing you in Strasbourg.